what's going on y'all and as you see today we kind of got the lord far quad cut <laughs> but that's besides the point today we're here to talk about a little more about the word of the lord about you know the gospel according to matthew so i mean let's just get straight back into it so check it out we left off on matthew 3 we read or we went over the first few chapters um just a couple verses really so how i thought the genealogy was cool uh, the wise men, you know, kind of how things started there. And then now we're going on to chapter four, which was the temptation of Jesus. This is after he was baptized by John the Baptist. And then he went on to be tempted by the devil for 40 days and nights in the desert. And during this entire time, he was fasting as well. This straight off the bat also just shows us how powerful fasting really is. When you choose to not eat, to you know, you, you you drink some water, sure, but when you choose to not eat anything and, you know, it's it's physiologically tough, but it reminds you have to remind yourself why you're doing it. Why are you going through this through this misery, through such pain? And it's because you're doing it, you know, for a greater purpose, you know, for Jesus's case, for his mission. And then when we fast, we're doing it for God. I mean, Jesus was doing it for God. He was doing it for himself. He loved God, his Father in heaven. He was God, and, you know, he left God with us with the Holy Spirit. The mystery of the Trinity, bro, the Trinity is so interesting. But going back to what the topic is, just the temptation of Jesus, just through through Matthew 4, or um, well, these parts of Matthew 4 right here. So for one, which was also, as he's saying here, on, on relation to fasting, um, one thing I already thought was so far was Matthew 4, 4. So for context, though, from Matthew 4, 4, um, it's talking about, okay, and if you see me looking down, it's because I'm looking at my Bible down here. I'll, I'll bring it up a little bit so you can actually see me reading it too. But it says, so as it was as he was fasting, the tempter, Satan, came to came to him and said, if you are the son of God, Command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he, Jesus, answered, It is written, One does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And that that line has so much power to it. As we were just talking about when it comes to fasting, when we fast, it feeds the spirit. When we fast, it gives us significance. It's not just... It's not just food that we live by. You know, it's also these other fruits of life that we live by, the things that make life worth living. And in this case, every word that comes from the mouth of God. When we read the Bible, we, I'm sure you know, you know, it, it breathes life into us. It, it pours, you're pouring the word of God into you. And that's a beautiful thing. Maybe this is your first exposure to the Bible or to, you know, just actually taking some time to look at it more. And I will I can attest to you, it's true. It's true. When you read the scripture, when you read it, it just, it's so beautiful. And I think this is very true of other forms of literature too, which is why you should be careful about what it is you're pouring into yourself. You know, that's why not biblical, but, you know, the meditations of Marcus Aurelius was also a fantastic read because it went over its stoic values, you know, to just be a someone who gets more in control of, his, of, of my emotions and what it is I think, what I feel and know that I am in complete control, control the controllables, you know. So and this go, going back to here. You know, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God, everything that we have here. And then this also attests to just the power, you could say, of the indomitable human spirit. But it's indomitable because it's connected to God's spirit. This this feeling of almost invulnerability that we will we'll have, you know, the persistence we have, you know, like when a boxer gets knocked out and gets back up. You know, when we see the indomitable human spirit, all those memes, there's truth to it. There's a lot of truth to it because you don't like, you know, I know this is someone who works really hard in the gym when I am not when I feel like I don't have anything more. I give it even more than I have. You know, I still do more. You know, I have, I'm struggling at five reps. I somehow managed to do another six, maybe seven. 
And it's phenomenal. And how is that possible? It's because, you know, I'm encouraging and like I'm being encouraged here, be it through who's talking to me, be it through what I'm kind of like. So like what music might do for me, music can be encouraging in and of itself. But what does the music trigger within you? What does the music do to you as a person? Like maybe something you heard, it just sparks a memory from within you that's just like, you know, I can do this. I can go further. And then you're like, I can do this. I can go further. I can get that extra rep. Then that belief becomes reality. Then you actually go forth and do it. You go forth and complete it. And you you do that extra rep, maybe even two, three, four, five extra ones, more than, much more than you thought you could. And that's, again, a phenomenal thing here. So this is we also see as something that is even in a, you could say a semi-secular notion, I still believe it's the spirit of God moving here though, through like motivational speakers. You know, I'll say like, I've gone to many business events in the past and I've gotten to, I've gotten the privilege of actually getting to learn from these hyper successful millionaires, you know, how, what, what their secrets are. And then what they do is basically they, they're, mo they're showing us technique, but then they're also motivating. And then you can also, uh, plenty of them on YouTube as well, you know, like Les Brown, David Goggins, um, plenty others, but like David Goggins for one, like that's an amazing one. Obviously Les Brown, also an amazing one. Um, but you got these dudes just talking to you, but they're motivating you as they talk. They're talking to your very spirit, to your soul. I mean, look, when someone talks to you, they're not talking to, or when even when you talk to someone, you're not talking to their flesh. You're not talking to their their eyes or their nose, their mouth, their, you know, or the, the skeleton that resides within you. No, they're talking to something much deeper than that. They're talking to you, to you, the essence that resides within this bag of bones that you operate, you know, that is what they're talking to. And that is what these motivational speakers are talking to. When they talk to you, they talk to you and they encourage you. I'd say that no, that is the spirit of God in some way, just working. It is working through the however mysteriously it may work, but it is working through that to get to you and empower you, you know, to know that you can do more, that you can do this, that you will do better. But it's only if you have that belief, let it enter you. And then you will continue to move on. Then you'll see that the food is not that big a deal. You know, waiting to eat till even the next day or like going one full day without eating is not that big a deal because the purpose that it's for is just so incredibly strong. And it'll just, it's so, I don't want to say motivating, but it's very fulfilling. You know, it's fulfilling in a spiritual sense. Yes. And then you're able to do it. You're able to do it with no problem. And that's, again, just a fantastic thing, fantastic notion here. So, my, I went on for that one for a while now. <laughs> but that, see, that's just even just one verse. That's um, how amazing the wisdom in the Bible is. So, going onward, this one is, oh, this one, this one's going to be interesting. Because th this is actually take two of this video. And I actually realized this as I was reading it. This is not why I redid it. I had an appointment I had to keep to. But the second point here is, so I highlighted Matthew 4, 8, or no, 4, 7. Yes, Matthew 4, 7. So which is, do not put the Lord your God to the test. There's a lot to unpack here. But the, the, the first part I'd like to even get into is prior to this. So the context of this here, which is in Matthew 4, 5. So the devil took him to the holy city, placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to him, again, it is written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Oh, my friends, there is actually so much to unpack here. So much. 
<laughs> but I will leave it for the next one because I think I've spoken enough already about the indomitable human spirit. And again, this one verse, this one little segment here. Oh, there's a lot to unpack um, when it comes to the text. Historically, personally, we will get into it in the next one, though. Um, if you listen through this, thank you. I appreciate the support. I hope you enjoyed it too. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am because this is really fun to talk about. This is really cool to go through. But, you know, in any case too, I do hope you're reading the Bible and also reading some other thing, like some other good literature too that, you know, I'll, I'll, we're going to go over it all in the future as well because trust me, I'm, I, you know, I might be buff, but I'm a nerd, bro. I'm a nerd through and through. Trust me. But, it's, it's going to be fun. Anyhow, thank you for sticking around. Much love. Have an absolutely blessed day. Mwah.